the contract. Can you hear me all right? Come around my energy because you going to catch a contact. I can hear you just great. Well, then we're sad. I had issues before, but we're crazy. Millions. There's the line. Out of sight, and I'm still in there. Until that shit is mine. Talk big money like Mike's up a millionaire. So we really Here we are. What's going on, dude? Just chilling, man. You? Yeah, just fucking chilling. I've been on Zoom all day, so that's hilarious. But I just smashed some goddamn toast with, get this, grandma whipped up some fucking butter with cinnamon and honey and like whip that all up Cinnabutter. on some hot toast it is fucking unbelievable that sounds like a nice little like afternoon yeah. pick me up you know that, a little sugar that's, no that sounds like an afternoon i'm about to crash <laughs> it's the crash and burn that with the yeah. coffee you get like a good hour and then it's yeah. like downhill <laughs> so i'm riding on caffeine and fucking cinnamon toast sugar i'm, crunch, I'm so. right there with this the, the caffeine not the cinnamon although wishing i had it <laughs> true you know what i didn't bring to this goddamn meeting of the minds was you're a coffee aficionado i should have brought my coffee with its uh with its nice crema on I, sh- I should have as well honestly i'm sitting here didn't with the water it. like a peasant idiot i know like a like a pez idiot i didn't even bring <laughs> i have like yesterday's coffee mug here See, and that's the uh, only the only downside of really good coffee is if you leave it in a cup, it's still oh, yeah. like twice as oh, bad. Oh, I just throw it each mug out every yeah, time I use it. It's pretty much one of those. You just move on, take the uh, L, move on. Well, that's what happens when you get that good, good internet NFT money. That's well, that's the hopes, and we're getting it. It's just a matter of getting more. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, bitches, if you're listening to this, it's Mike Up Millionaires, and we got Dan the Lost Boy here tonight. Also, the uh co-creator with uh, Matt McKeever, who all of you know, uh, of the Space Monkey Fight Club and Project LB52, which is custom freaking rap songs to go with your freaking awesome Space Monkeys. And uh, I'm going to, if you're watching this, uh, you're going to be able to see my Space Monkey pop up somewhere around here, if I remember to edit that in. And uh, you will also get some of the audio. I'll make sure to put that up on the front. So you've already heard that probably. What am I talking about? Heck yes. And, <laughs> but yeah, Dan, dude, what is going on, man? You came out of nowhere. We met like uh, <clears throat> we met like a year ago, maybe. But I, I'd, I'd always heard about you and, and some of your, your music, like your local artists and everything. And then we kind of got connected through the click and problems or profits and working with Matt and everything like that. And then uh, that, I guess, kind of turned into this NFT project. So I would love to just like, like introduce yourself. What's the journey been? What's the Lost Boys thing all about? How do we get to Project LB52? We're making custom NFT rap songs, and then we'll dive into uh, whatever comes out of that. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. First and foremost, glad to be here and glad to kind of spit some game, tell my story. Um, yeah, it all kind of started with music and, and that was kind of like out of high school. I'd always been playing around with guitar, predominantly rap music and, you know, pursued that to an end too much as, as, as much as I could really, you know, financially, it's a tough game out there being an indie artist, especially young and maybe not having the business savvy at the time. So I kind of started, um, you know, just releasing singles, things like that, getting it out on the internet and, and seeing the reaction. And from there, kind of fizzled out again because of some of just the the walls you'll run into as an indie artist and transitioned a bit into to fashion and, and kind of look to connect people through art still, but in a little bit of a different way. And that's where Lost Boys kind of came out of. Uh, a fashion, apparel, but more lifestyle brand looking to kind of connect people through the notion that we're all kind of lost, always looking for, you know, our true selves and always looking to level up into a new version of that. And, and kind of rode that out for a couple of years. We're still pushing on that front, but a little less focus on it due to, as you alluded to this, this NFT business that I started with Matt and um, just a little more um, perspective of the kind of the come up is I used to chat with Matt way back a couple of years ago, just again, picking up a little business savvy, trying to, to, to get the music to come up to maybe where the, uh, the fashion brand had gotten to. And he was just giving me some advice and things like that. And over a year or two of kind of, you know, contact here and there, it, it grew into let's get into a, a business relationship long term. Let's really leverage what's happening in the NFT space. And shout outs to Matt and thank you to Matt for kind of turning me on to NFTs and what they're able to do for all artists, 
but specifically tying back into the music that I was always kind of pushing for. So now we're really cooking away on the, the Space Monkey NFT, which is the avatar with custom song. And, and that's really the sauce right now, going full bore on that. As I said, still have some other businesses and ventures, but full focus on this one, trying to get it, it fully um, under itself, some good legs. That way I can bring up all those other ventures along with it. So that's kind of the, the one-two punch of kind of the come up and how I got to, to here with Matt as a partner and, and this NFT business. Well, I know Matt's a, <clears throat> Matt's a big fan of, of the rap genre, right? Excuse me, I'm coughing here on the mic, Jesus. Uh, no, Matt's a big fan of, of the rap genre and he's, he's always been into kind of hip hop and what's under the sort of uh, mask of hip hop. Like I, I know a lot of the modern music is just like guns, cars, titties, whatever. Yeah. Um, but like the stuff that, you know, myself and I've heard Matt listen to a lot is, is actually a bunch of lessons from people that had it really hard, uh, learned hard lessons, probably did some bad shit as well. Um, and then came out of that through just commitment, hard work, uh, you know, kind of embracing the grind or the struggle and getting through those periods by choosing to do so. Right. And like, that's where a lot of guys are actually, their lyrics are really about life, right. They're about lessons, lessons learned, how you, how you go from, you know, living in a bad place and transitioning out of that and then potentially remembering some of the differences of how you used to live versus how you want to live and, and how you're living now. And, I understand that. And like, it, it's really cool as an artist like yourself to be able to like, just, you know, bring your experience to other people um, through, through a form of art with, with music. And I've always really respected that. And I've always been somebody who like, you know, like I, every time I hear a song, particularly if I like it, like I am absolutely in the lyrics. Like I, I'm looking up the lyrics and making sure I really understand like, what's the message of this song? And uh, I think that's really cool that we're now seeing technology uh, being able to help out artists with bridging that gap between and, and being able to be, I don't know how you really define indie, but how I see it as like an independent artist, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, somebody that wants to make their own music, have an impact, share their story, uh, whether that's just out of passion or maybe they want to make money with it, or maybe they just want to have an outlet to share uh, their emotions with and like <clears throat> all of that's really cool but nfts are a particularly cool way uh to be able to establish your own brand to be able to actually make something with it that people can get uh without having to be attached to some giant label or however people you know the typical route of getting uh your music in front of people so i think that's really badass man and uh with nfts like i i, I guess there's just unlimited space there and what you guys have done is custom songs like that is fucking talent, dude. Like I never, um, I never thought, you know, Oh, what I, what I need in life is a custom song, but then we go through the process. Like you, you buy a space monkey, uh, space monkey fight club. You go there, there's 50, there's only 52 of them. And now I think there's only like, you know, 49 or something, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so you guys have just basically launched this. There's only a, a handful of these things available, but you buy one of these. And then I actually loved the experience of going through your form. So you mm -hmm. buy it, there's hidden content available, which is really cool you click through that hidden content on OpenSea once you purchase the actual NFT. And there's this really well laid out, well thought out. Uh, it, it looks just like a Google form, but it's a form that's like a, a survey or questionnaire of all these different little details about things in your life and things that you're interested in and these little details. And then Dan writes a goddamn custom song based on all the things that you input into that. And it's really freaking cool. And uh, so for mine, I went like, really loosey goosey uh early with dan and like dan just kind of was able to look at my instagram and things that he knew about me just based on my public image or public profile and made this freaking banger uh out of it which i'm gonna i'm gonna have included in the podcast and like damn dude that is such talent and so cool uh it's gotta be cool having that freedom it, it's really fun to be honest with you i think that was the main thing i learned through it is the a the freedom of just being able to make a song kind of about anything and and but the fun and the confidence boost that it, I got from like understanding that I could do that because yeah. I've always just written about things that, you know, pertain to my experiences, my life and, and things that I knew about, but it was nice to get outside my comfort zone and to write about other people, brands, businesses, things that I didn't necessarily know a lot about out of the gate, but by doing a little bit of research, a little bit of sleuthing, yeah. you can pick up those, those personal bits and those nuances that really add to a custom song. Cause that's what it's, 
really the, the key word there is custom to that person. They choose the beat. They, as you said, the form really goes into detail and allows that person to kind of niche down what they really want it to be about. And again, what they don't want it to be about, because that's important too. And hopefully by the end of it, you get a banger just like you got that you can play and pump yourself up with and, you know, show to friends, fam and, and kind of flex. Cause that's part of the NFT land as well, you know, flexing. And it's fun to have your own custom song to do that with. Well, there's so many dimensions to NFTs. Like there's the, the flex is kind of cool, like using it as a avatar or using it as a representation of your values or whatever. Like, I think that's really fascinating. <clears throat> um, one of the other things that I've seen you doing, which I think is really, really cool is using it to um, bridge gaps or build relationships that you otherwise would never have access to. So like you did the V friends song, right? Yep. Um, and even the board ape yacht club song that you did just for Matt's Matt's specific ape, right? So it's got a specific number. There's specific characteristics about it. It's the DMT for board ape yacht club. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got the dress and you incorporated that into it. The ability to bridge those gaps, like how else do you get a tweet from V friends, which is an extension of Gary V, right? For well, sure. you know, it's really fucking hard. Like Gary Vee has millions of fans, millions of them. How does one artist, one individual reach out to somebody like that and offer them something of value in, in some other way? It's probably really hard. Um, and that's just the reality of it, but it's really cool. Like you've, we're kind of solving with NFTs and with the idea that you guys are following, which is just like, okay, we're going to do one uh, every week right? I'll be 52. We're going to do 52 custom songs. So we're going to do, you know, a song for everything that's going on in the news and to be able to bridge that gap is just unbelievable. Cause the hardest part of writing, everybody knows this is getting started. Like how do you start? Um, you know, I've written lots of real estate articles. I've written an ebook on, uh, starting up businesses and stuff. And the hardest fucking thing is chapter one, because like you have all these thoughts in your head, but it's just really hard to get it down. Now, if I, if we can put things in front of you, like, okay, we, we can, we know a bunch about Gary Vee. We know a bunch about Gary Vee's project. We know what he's trying to accomplish with that project. That's the starting point, right? Mm -hmm. We're, we're going to wrap about that person. What's, in, what's valuable to them. And by yeah. doing that, you're completely just throwing, you're shoveling value down their face. And that's what I think is really cool about these NFTs is like, yeah, the song you made for me is really just a personal flex song. Or like, if I'm going to do any uh, stage speaking events or anything, I'll use that. Because uh, mm -hmm. with these NFTs, you get the rights to the song and artwork and everything. So, um, you know, I'll use that if I go and do any talks now on stage, right? I'll use that. Um, I use it all the time when I'm going to real estate deals. I'll play it in the car, right? It sounds fucking sick in my Tesla or in, in the Platinum, right? Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. It's dangs. <laughs> right? On these uh, Bose headphones. My God, it's crazy. So, like, I use it to pump, pump myself up. I use it for a bit of a credibility piece. I use it. Um, really just for myself, but there's all these other dimensions to it. Like with the board API club, I use that as my ticket to say, I know what I'm talking about, or I have mm. some credibility in the NFT space. Right. For sure. It's it, uh, like with, to your point about just like how, um, you can reach out to all of these, these people that you may have never had a chance of getting on their radar. I've I, another kind of point to that NFTs being the, the main driver, but Twitter, I, I, I like a tip yeah. to anyone that's watching or listening. Um, Twitter is just massive for, for reaching out in maybe a different way. Obviously, like you said, looking to provide value is probably the best way to have a good likelihood of, of actually getting a reply or an engagement, but also doing it on Twitter, I think is, is like the double down because it seems like, people are a lot more forthcoming with, with likes, retweets and engagement, whereas Instagram and other things, not to say that there's not value there, but it's become a little bit more difficult, maybe due to algorithms. And again, just the NFT niche that there is on Twitter, it, it, there's really a large, vast community. And it was super cool to do that on multiple occasions and kind of prove out the, the concept that you know, we can actually get in front of some, some big names and get on their, their radar in maybe a small way, but in a way, and it's through these custom songs, integrating NFTs. And like you said, providing value first in, in all interactions of coming with something and not looking for something from someone else. It's like, Hey, I, I showed up to the, to your house warming with a gift and I didn't just expect to eat dinner. There's a little a, a strategy to it. And I think the custom song hits a, a little bit of a, an emotional chord with people because sometimes you're speaking to, like you said, their values, 
their, their brand, their business, and hopefully highlighting all of the positives from it. So I was really hype on the B friends one specifically, and to see Gary V's account, get the, the retweet on, um, or the repost on tw- Instagram, I should say, was just a, a great experience. And like, we're agreeing kind of, a a ding, a little light going off of like, yo, there's some real value to, to, to network and, you know, build the net worth through that. Yeah, well, one word you said there, which I, I don't think uh, people who have not jumped into NFTs yet, they haven't really understood this, is like NFTs and particularly NFTs on Twitter and Discord and stuff. The word you said is community. And uh, I didn't understand this at all. Like I got to where I'm at in NFTs, which, uh, you know, between the stuff I've got with Matt and myself, like we're, we're doing well, right? Like we own yeah. all the blue chip projects. Um, so if you can name it and it's worth something, we probably have one or two of them. So that's really exciting because I got into this by mistake. Like I was of the mindset when we first got them, I was like, you know, this is bullshit. This is some bubble. This is some, mm. uh, some scam, which even, a, you know, a good scam when it's working is, is still a potentially profitable thing, right? Like mm-hmm. I was like, this fucking Ponzi scheme, they're going to sell me a JPEG. It's going to be worth nothing tomorrow. Uh, but if it goes up but before tomorrow, cool. Now it's hot potato. I can play hot potato if we really have to, where I buy in at 800 bucks and I sell it for a thousand and then it goes up to 1200, but then it goes to like a hundred. And that is actually 99.99% of NFTs. So I wasn't wrong in that train of thought. But what you start understanding is that particularly the blue chip stuff and particularly the stuff that is made by true artists is they're building real communities that have real followers that actually use it as a tool to say, I'm like you, right? I have similar values to you. I'm interested in the same things as you. Uh, Maybe I am of the same or similar um, you know, tribe is you. And like, mm-hmm. that allows us to connect and have conversations with complete strangers over the internet that actually might be more like you. And that's a pretty cool thing for, uh, you know, making the world a bit of a smaller place because it's, it's crazy out there. And people have been starving for connection over the last few years mm-hmm. with uh, fuckface, otherwise known yeah. as uh, Trudeau, you know, just shutting down the world. Like you can't, in our country you can't fucking do anything you can't see people can't interact so it's cool to have these community pieces and one thing that i'm uh i'm very 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 bad at twitter and i'm very i'm even worse at discord but it is the truth there that you know you can go and if you have one of the avatars that you know and hopefully you make your profile picture uh your nft that you're trying to connect with these people mm-hmm. like for me it's the board ape having the board ape uh, as my profile photo gets me to connect with like, I have picked up like 400 followers or something like that of just apes. Right. Wow. Or people that are interested in NFTs. And for me, 400 is uh, not a huge number, but I know what it was like to go on Instagram from 400 to 800. That was actually an impossible task. I had to make like so many videos with Matt. I had to go around doing talks and doing all sorts of stuff about real estate, you know, meeting thousands of people to get those 400 followers yeah yeah the community on on twitter and on discord and in these nft communities is like no no no. you have it you're like me you're we're part of the same tribe and then you can start having conversations with these people and i think half of what holds people back in life in general is just having the desire or the uh boldness or whatever to go and talk to somebody right yeah just say yep. fucking hi and that's not yeah. easy for people like i think you and i have a, a bit of a different experience potentially than a lot of people in that like i know i know enough about you to know that you would just walk up and have a conversation with anyone. yeah yeah and i'm the same but most people i don't think are really like that right there's that inner monologue of like well what if i say something stupid mm-hmm. what if i don't you know what if whatever that doesn't happen on NFTs. And I think another beautiful element of NFTs in particular is that the community around it is not serious about like they're, there's potentially very serious investors, but they're also doing it in a way that's fun. It's lighthearted. It's very um, open-minded where like, you know, half of the jokes are like just misspelling fucking words on purpose to just say like, you know, this is something we're having fun with right? It's potentially very profitable for you. You know, our portfolio is like seven figures. So we know it's port, uh, it's uh, um, profitable, but we're not going to take ourselves so seriously that we can't joke or spell shit wrong or like just make fun of the traditional system. And that's what yeah. we need, 
right? You're, you're absolutely right. And I was, I'm glad you said the traditional system and kind of poking fun at it. And I think that's a big point of why there's a lot of meme culture and, you know, jokes and, and lightheartedness is because we know what we're kind of stepping away from and trying to adopt yeah. new, you know, habits and new kind of, again, culture around it. And like you were saying, the connection and that I see your picture, I know your picture, I instantly connect, we now have a shoe in, it, it, it kind of break down, breaks down those barriers of, like you say, the intimidation to communicate and also being online based, I feel like you can create all of these different um, relationships and then transition into a lot of these um, projects have IRL meetups, you know, v VCon, for example, we're going to be there, shout outs to everybody going to VCon, we'll definitely link up and it, it just, I feel like solidifies when you see these people in person you you really get to know them it's like being on um a real extensive gamer um experience where you really grow and learn with these people and then when you see them in real life it's like friends and fam you you kind of have built that but without all the intimidation factors so i think nfts are really changing things in terms of like you know a portfolio and profit and and as a collector investor, but also like culture and community and connection and people actually um, feeling understood. And even if it's just about a silly, chubby, cute photo that they rock on their socials, that's the starting off point of, of, you know, maybe some really big relationships. I've been lucky enough to like, you know, they might be just internet friends, but they're friends and, and potential colleagues in business going forward. So it's, one of those things that seems jokey, jokey, and, and like too, too fun when you observe it from the outside. But if you dig in a little deeper, you see it's pretty genuine. And there's a lot of, a lot of leverage there for, for, you know, the community and, and kinship. Well, absolutely. And like, you know, in the past, Matt and I have, we've, we've un always understood that this was lacking in a lot of interactions, right? Like we would go to all these real estate meetups and somebody would have watched like, you know, a dozen videos of you speaking or in Matt's case, hundreds of videos of you yeah. speaking, but they wouldn't come and talk to us. Right. They would just, Oh shit. It's Matt. Like it's Matt McKeever. Mm. My God. Right. Or uh, I'm sure nobody ever said that about me, but I, I can dream. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's Adam J.D. Martin. Uh, well, um, but no, what we used to do is in order to bridge that gap is we would wear red tuxedo jackets to every event. So then we mm. were the guys in the red jackets. Well, what do you do? You instinctively go up and you say, dude, that's a fucking crazy jacket. And that's the in. And that's what mm. NFTs are doing on an even more ambiguous um, platform, which is the internet. And like the internet's a weird fucking place. Like you yeah. can go and be an anonymous, crazy person and say shit that you would never say um, in front of somebody. And you have the license to do that on the internet where you can dodge in and troll people and be yep. a, a creeper, right? Like you can be pretty shitty on the internet and there's very little consequences. Now, NFTs are sort of the inverse where you can actually be amazing on the internet and it gives you the opportunity to go and do that at like no cost. Yeah. Just come in and follow me. And, you know, with the, I'll talk a bunch about Board Ape Yacht Club because that's the one I'm most engaged with. But mm -hmm. on that, there's a whole hashtag, Ape Follow Ape, yeah. right? And like, all that means is like, literally, it's kind of like wearing a free hugs t-shirt. Like, just come, <clears throat> give me a hug, it's fine. And I'll hug you back. Right? Yeah, and, and there's no cost. There's no friction. There's no uh, opportunity cost of doing this. There's no anything. It's like, no, you, we want to just connect with each other and who knows where that's going to go. Mm -hmm. And um, I am much more active on Instagram. Um, so I've been trying to connect the two worlds and trying to figure out Twitter. It's, it's definitely been a pain in the ass for me, but you know, I've had a bunch of people now reach out <clears throat> um, because of social posts that I made. So like I, I shared this uh, post about the trucker convoy thing. It's mm. got like 40,000 views on Instagram. Wow. Me. And uh, and I had people reaching out and saying, fuck, yeah, like, uh, you know, we spark Canadians, blah, blah, blah. And, and, and reminiscing with that post. But then I had a bunch of people go, oh, dude, I'm also an ape. Right. Mm. I see that you, you hold an ape. I'm ape number whatever. And I live in London let's get together for dinner, right? Come to my Whoa. house, right? Whoa. Come to my house. And you're like, damn. And it's really interesting because, you know, particularly with the apes, um, not to go too deep onto this, but, you know, particularly with the apes, who owns one of these things? Well, a true collector mm -hmm. owns one who got in early and like paid almost nothing for it and is holding on to it because, you know, they, they really like the artwork or the community. 
<clears throat> or somebody that's wealthy enough, or I guess in both cases, somebody that has enough resources mm. to not sell this thing and who's decided that the long-term value of this community and this project is actually worth more than the short-term financial gains. Because at this point, if you want an ape, you know, that thing's worth $400,000. Yeah. Who in their right mind would hold on to that thing? Well, as it turns out, there's 10,000 of us around the world that mm -hmm. are deciding to make that choice. And then there's all the subsidiary products like the uh, art uh, artwork dividends that they've given out, like the um, Mutant Ape Yacht Club, yep. right? So the serums and the um, Board Ape Kennel Club, which they give to you. And for anybody listening that doesn't really know this stuff, um, if you bought a Board Ape, <clears throat> At, at certain times, they've given out essentially the best way to think of it is dividends. They've given you an additional piece of artwork. Now, that artwork, when they gave it to you, was free or it cost you a small price to mint it, maybe a couple of hundred bucks or something like that, whatever minting costs. Um, so they've given you this dividend. You minted it. It's now in your wallet. If you just held on to it, some of these pieces of art, like the serum, was worth 130000 the other day. Mm -hmm. um, and then they gave multiple tiers of it. So if you were lucky enough to get it, like the M3 serum, well, that thing, um, you know, they're selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? Yeah, and so yeah. who's holding on to these? Well, I don't know, but I want to know. And this is the thing when people reach out to me now and they go, oh, dude, I see that you're, uh, you're holding ape, whatever. And I go, yeah, man, you're holding one too. I got to know, what do you do? Like, mm. what do you do? Yeah. Who are you that you don't need to be selling a fucking JPEG for 400,000 today? Right. I need to know. And that's how you can really get into cool rooms. And who else for is sure. in the club? Well, freaking like Eminem and freaking Snoop Dogg and yeah, freaking yeah. whoever. So wait a minute. The average nerd who picked one of these up uh, for nothing is now playing in the same club. Um, you know, no pun intended, but playing in the same club as Eminem and Snoop yeah. Dogg and Pepsi or who, a bunch of companies have bought these things. Yeah. And you're like, well, this has never happened before. Um, and there's a really cool, <clears throat> I'm going on a freaking rant here, but oh, there's another really it. cool application to this, which is company. You see these companies buying it, which once you start seeing institutional money come into these projects, first of all, they're going to be worth a lot more. Yep. But think of this from the business perspective. It's huge. You buy an NFT and you make headlines on every national newspaper, every national news web thing, like whatever. Uh, I don't know if people read newspapers anymore, but the fucking articles that come out yeah. are all going to say, wow, Coca-Cola bought whatever. Now, Coca-Cola spent, maybe they bought it at, when it was high. They bought it for 200 grand. They buy this freaking image. They make headlines everywhere across the world. They get advertising everywhere across the world. Their name yeah. plastered everywhere. Then they get to keep the asset that they just spent their money on and it doubles over time, right? Or yeah. it appreciates over time. This is the craziest thing ever in, in the history. In advertising history, this has never happened. It has not ever been possible. Traditionally, you know, where's Coke? Well, they're on the Super Bowl. Well, what's that look like? well fuck that looks like 10 million dollars for 10 yeah. seconds of ads and then guess what your ad spend is gone it's You're done not yeah buying that back now maybe you generated business or maybe you were budweiser and like you made a, co a commercial that people are going to talk about in marketing class for the next two decades mm. but you you spent the money it's gone you expensed yeah. it well guess what expense it on this get the asset wait for it to appreciate become another one of the Per, the people contributing to the value of it yeah and uh and then you have it always available to sell or to hold and it's like that that is mind-blowing when you start to think about that from and a marketing perspective you're absolutely right like that rinse and repeat ability to be yeah. able to like hold one asset and be able to rinse and repeat and do different things in arizona i arizona. actually did yeah. that and and you'll there's actually another value to it as well and that's the, the cultural like follower count like you literally just by changing your PFP as a business on Twitter, Instagram, and those things, you're going to get larger engagement from different, you know, um, groups yeah, yeah. that you would have never been able to tap into these different markets, these different types of, of avatar, customer avatar. And yeah, it's, it's incredible to see how your money can go further as even a massive corporation to just buy an NFT. Like you say, make the headlines for, oh, this is insane. They're entering yeah. the NFT world, kind of making a buzz for a day or two in, in crypto, Twitter, on the blogs, all of that. But then to be able to even use the NFT yeah. on 
marketing material to use it on the yeah. can for Arizona. They could do like yeah. a, a board ape or a lazy lion or whichever NFTs they've purchased yeah. printed on their can and leverage that community over and over. But in a really, I think, tasteful, organic way, it's not like they're like, you know, piggybacking off of it in a negative way. They're actually contributing to it. Yeah. Well, and that's, it's one of the only places where their ad spend literally actively, it, it benefits the actual community of owners, right? Yeah. That's ne you never get to taste Coca-Cola's money. You You're just right. don't, unless you work for a, one of their subsidiaries, factories, supply chain, whatever. I'm sure they have lots of stakeholders that benefit from their shit, but like, there's no other way where you can say, oh, I want to buy into this, right? Like, I, I want to be part of that community. And everybody that, you know, again, to use Board Ape Club, apes in, is yeah. actually actively contributing to the bottom line of both the creators, which is fantastic from the artist perspective and the community, mm -hmm. uh, but, but everybody else is holding them. And like, I, I just can't, Dan, nobody understands NFTs yet. No, like, realistically, of the total population, let's just go with nobody. Yeah. Nobody understands crypto. Nobody understands NFTs. Nobody understands the value of them from a business or a personal standpoint. Yeah. Like I've heard very few conversations like this on the internet where people are talking about like, no, there's a real community. Like this is actually the excuse to go and talk to people and make friends and build yourself up for sure. Um, people that are like you, right. Which is what, what else is the value? Like, what else are we doing in life? Like if yeah. we're not trying to connect with other people and build it's, our tribe and, and have a livelihood and like, that's what we do. So this is another tool to do that. And we're still at the point where like good fucking luck trying to, ex to explain to your grandfather how, and this is my grandpa's all the time. He loves the ape. He's addicted to that thing. He asked me every day. I what love it's it. For and why I didn't sell it yet. Whatever. But for him, like try and explain to him the idea of walking into Scotiabank, wire transferring a bunch of money to shake pay Sending it from ShakePay to a hard wallet, which is this fucking gadget that you have to plug in that fucks yeah. with you every time you try and use it. And, and then go on to the internet on some marketplace that you really don't understand because things are priced in Ethereum instead of dollars. And so it's confusing already. Yeah. Now you're like, oh, the currency changes. And so the value of the thing changes. Nobody gets it. It's not easy. It, this is like the telephone on its first week. Right. It, and people it, are like, what yeah. do you mean? You can't talk to people that aren't in the same room as you. That's stupid. Right. That's insane. We don't yeah. do that. We it, don't do that here. The, the, the converse, like NFT, the word is just an immediate like resistance point for a lot of people. Yeah. And I've, I think like just completely thinking out loud here, I think that's going to be a massive disservice to a lot of people that, that the kind of resistance of a learning curve yeah. being so large for them that they don't even want to entertain it. Their mind is completely closed to it. And, and I, I'm pretty confident we'll be able to pull this up and it'll age quite well in two years. They'll be yeah. kicking themselves for thinking, yep. why did I not give this a chance? Why did I not even just listen? You don't need to get it day one, but be able to entertain and have, like I say to people, a lot of the time, it's not even an understanding. It's a belief. Like they just don't have any belief that that could ever be a thing or like they, they, no, no, I get it. Like the picture is kind of a membership, this, I get the, the structure, but they don't understand or have that belief of it's going to, to keep snowballing. As you said, we're so early. It's kind of like cliche to say, but it's, it's absolutely true. There's like a sliver of the, the pie chart of the population yeah, of the world that even zero. knows what is going on here. And I mean, at, at this point, because I'm so deep in it, it's nice because it makes it a little bit of a smaller pond to play in, you know, a little bit less noise. There's still a lot of noise, but I think, like I said, my main point is if you're hearing this, if you're listening to this, do some diligence, do some yeah. research on NFTs, even just like I say, entertain the conversations around you and don't just kind of shun them because you'll definitely hate yourself for it. And I like even myself for, for maybe not listening to some signals about bored apes, even when I first got into the space, yeah. just maybe not the belief it was, was at full levels at that point. And yep. I'm kicking myself well, for it. No, so but that's all that it ever person. is. It's yeah. confidence. It's, it's confidence. Right. It's awareness. It's competence as well. Like, do I understand it? You know, do I know what it is? Do I understand it? Do I feel like I can accomplish it? Uh, these are the things that hold us back. And, and, you know, um, I look at one of the most perfect examples of this is when I was buying a board ape yacht club, I actually had set out to buy three. 
but my ledger was giving me problems that day with blind signing, which I later figured out. And like now is a not factor right now that I'm competent. I actually yep. understand that thing just tries to fuck with you every day. So you just, there's some ways you can go into the settings, fix it really quick. It takes two seconds. Instead of buying three board ape club, uh, board ape yacht club, uh, NFTs, which is what I set out to do that day. I bought one. Mm. Well, guess what? That's the fucking difference of $800,000 of profit. You moron. And so I learned that lesson. And if that wasn't bad enough, as I watched <clears throat> Matt bought three, but he dollar cost averaged them. He bought them as they were continuing to rise. Well, mm -hmm. I didn't have confidence in the project. I thought, wow, this thing's just gone from $800 to $3,000. That's insane. Nobody ever can do that. Well, now it's gone from 3,000 to 10,000. Holy fuck, this thing's really picking up steam. It's bound to die. It's bound to mm -hmm. fall. Yeah. Well, now it's gone from 3,000 to 10,000 to $50,000. And that is horrifying there's no That's way right. i would buy in at 50k now what was i doing while all that happened well i was buying uh a snowmobile right i was buying um i bought a truck right hundred thousand mm. dollar truck mm. bro had you taken that money and put it into the fucking thing that you kind of had a lot of indications were the right thing you would have had you know if i took that 100k instead of a truck and put it in the apes Dude, you would be a multi, 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 multi millionaire. Now we never have a crystal ball, so it's always salt yeah. and wound. But I did the same thing again with V Friends. The V Friends launch was really fucked up. Okay, mm. they launched late. It was very bad. Like it was very clunky. I remember I, that. I was waiting. I was waiting for the launch. I waited at at launch time. I waited three hours after launch time. I didn't pull the trigger when they did finally launch because I mm. said mm, this didn't go as planned, and I started yeah. getting doubt fear like, yeah so i ended up partnering on uh just one with matt so i partnered on one with matt i said yeah i'll split the risk with somebody else which is a cool way to do things if you want to yep. put one toe in and somebody has more confidence than you okay let's for sure the um but what i should have done was what matt did buy like seven of them because they were worth nothing when they mm -hmm. were launched like literally nothing today now you're looking at real money yeah and this is the thing I think it's good that people are able to get in now because you have the opportunity to do what I did, which is get in at low prices on great projects. Yeah. That's very, very, very possible. And I believe will continue to be possible into the future. The real thing I look at is who's behind the project. Do I believe in them? Are they committed to it? And if I'm committed to the person, so let's look at another example, Tom Bilio, he did mm -hmm. the impact theory founder keys. I'm committed to Tom Bilio. I believe he's a winner. Okay. Agreed. Now his founder keys have been relatively useless from a financial perspective. Does that mm -hmm. mean it's a bad project or a bad investment? Well, I have to ask myself, how much value has Tom Bilio given me? Well, actually it turns out tens and tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars of knowledge from mm. his free goddamn YouTube show um, called impact theory. So yep. do I really feel bad that I put, you know, I think I only put three to five grand into that project. Do I feel bad about that? Am I going to miss that money? Actually, no. And it's already made me way more money than that intuition, mm. just paying for his content. So this is where I think NFTs are another cool, coming back to uh, Space Monkey Fight Club or LB52, it's another really cool way to support somebody that either you want to just show financial support to that in the past maybe wasn't monetizing their stuff, or yep. somebody that you want to show support to where like money's not really that consequential to you, but you think it would keep them on their path a little bit mm. longer. Like, dude, if I know you, I like you, I trust you. Yep. And I want to do business with you and you're an artist and you're telling me I can either do this or I can go work at the, at the Coke factory. And really to me, and if you're in my position, you know, if the difference is you're hanging on by 500 bucks, I'm never going to miss the 500 bucks. If I know you, like you trust, you want to do business, yeah. or want to support you that 500 bucks doesn't matter to me, but it can change the artist's life. And so there's that element to NFTs too, that I really yeah. appreciate. And like, you know, how about your experience, you know, going from your previous work into doing this, which I'm going to assume you love doing this. Like what's that difference? It's insane, man. Like even yeah. just this space from coming from like conventional workplaces, I've always worked in factories my whole yeah. like working life up until now and just getting really used to that like factory culture and like kind of the mindset of pretty pessimistic most times of, you know, this is all we'll ever have type deal. And to come into something that's so abundance-based and, and people, like you say, willing to invest in people 
not just the project, not just the asset that they get, but people willing to put a pretty large dollar figure sometimes down on the person or the artist behind it. And that's been so refreshing, obviously, like, you know, from a creator standpoint, but even just as a, like a person, just to get into yeah. a, a new realm where there's a fresh vibe and people are a lot more trusting and a lot more, like you said, they have their scorecard. If it meets their criteria and they feel like you're a good person, it's almost like done deal at that point. There's a lot less, I feel like minutia in NFTs. If, if your project fits the bill, the utility feels useful, but like we're agreeing on top of it, the team you want to invest in, you believe in, they've maybe even given you value before and something on that point. Cause I know you were kind of talking about, it's a way with Tom bill you to kind of repay favors that you exactly and maybe feel like you almost some guilt of like, bro, you've made me a bag. And, and just through my mindset and through some of the content you fed me, I want to support and reciprocate back. And if that's the only reason behind it, that's pretty amazing, right? To, to be able to um, have somebody mo- basically be able to give you some cash back for something that you maybe didn't even know you, you helped them with. And to that point, actually, we do a Twitter space every Friday. And last week, one of our token holders was on and was kind of a, talking about this fact right here that... Matt didn't really know him, but was a large, you know, proponent of his growth and some of his, his just mindset around real estate and understanding, you know, some of the, the big thing, the pillars of, of Matt's education and come to see that this NFT project releases, and then actually kind of fell into my socials and my um, kind of personal funnel and fell in love with kind of me as a person too. So it was a double down of like, I'm not just investing in someone that helped me in the past. I'm investing in someone that I feel has really good energy for the the present and the future. Yeah. And obviously Matt falls into all of those categories, but it's just really cool to hear it out loud of like, just what you're saying with Tom Bill, somebody a little bit more close to home felt so moved or, you know, appreciative of some content that was free on the internet, on YouTube, that they're able to reciprocate through something like an NFT. And it's, it's super cool, man. It's like, that 1000 true fans article that yeah. I, I've been taught and, and kind of have lived through Matt has now boiled down through NFTs and distilled down to like a hundred true yeah. fans. Like you can honestly just find a very small group of people. It doesn't have to be 10,000 of people that are willing to support you and your team. And you can live off that. It's, it's really, again, just refreshing. Well, it's just cool because like in the, it's just so hard in the past. Like if, I'm sure you come from a similar ish background to me where like factory working or factory life was like the way, right. Of like, at mm-hmm. least my whole family, For but sure. like, when you see that happening over multiple generations, like where's the fucking end of the tunnel? Like it's yeah. very hard. And so you take some huge risk by going out, trying to do music as an artist or something like that. Or in my case, like, you know, going out and trying to do real estate and you're like, mm-hmm. fuck, I don't know anybody here. Um, it's very hard to make money here. There's setup costs, you know, there's, there's all sorts of things that you have to go out and learn or, or experiment with. And, uh, and really there's no clear path to like how to connect with more people or how to monetize it or how to explore these other options. And now I see it as a way where you can say like, you know what, Gary Vee's never going to stop. He, he is going to chase his project to its finality. And that means that I can take whatever limited resources I have right now and I can put them into, you know, directly supporting Gary, but also benefiting from Gary's energy. And yeah. it's a really cool way for us all to mutually benefit. And, uh, and I just think that's so cool for everybody that wants to explore alternative lifestyles. Like, now, so yesterday, uh, I actually shot a podcast with James Fernandez. If you happen to know him, he's a real estate investor in London. And uh, at the end of the podcast, I was exploring with him some ideas because earlier in the day, I was extremely goddamn frustrated with uh, the CRA. They called me, they fucked something up on there and mm. they were saying I owed them a bunch of money. I was like, no, that's 100% not true. And then we figured it out over the course of a couple hours on the phone. I'm like, fuck this country. Like, Our prime minister's a douchebag. He sucks. (laughs) Uh, These mandates and rules and regulations are garbage. And you get taxed like out the ass so that even if you break out of that factory mindset, well, now you're getting taxed 50%. And now like every dollar you make, half of it's going to the government and you're extremely frustrated with it. So I was talking to him about, have you ever considered just 
leaving Canada, like mm. leave it ex expatriating to somewhere else. And that's a, that's a thought that I have a lot lately is why am I here? Like, and yeah. why am I here is a bigger question. Like, am I doing what I love to do? Why am I here? Do I need mm. to be here? Are there other ways to do what I love doing uh, or what I love working on from other places? Well, yeah. it turns out actually, yes, the internet is pretty goddamn good around the world these days. You're right. Most of the things we do is available around the world these days. So what am I holding back on? Is it family? Is it relationships mm. that I have here? Is it the house and car and things that I own? And it's like, if I really wanted to do it, you know this with the music and with being an artist, if you really yep. wanted to do it, you would just do it. Yeah. Right. And so like, you know, we had that conversation a little bit and, and I, but just how amazing is it that you can go from like factory work and I can go from a family of factory workers mm. and we can just come out of this with a whole different perspective and potentially even join the elites. Yeah. Right? If you it's, it's crazy. And like when I actually left my last factory job, like obviously the two weeks notice was a little bit different Were you scared as, shitless <laughs> oh of course man and, and and it's it's crazy because out of all the factory jobs i'd ever had it was the one that you know treated me the best and wasn't the worst in yeah, terms of like good. culture yeah it was a pretty good job but to be able to walk into an office or have a phone call and be like i'm gonna go try and be a musician yeah and and to even sprinkle on because i like connected with some of my bosses like and there's gonna be a crypto undertone and like yeah people just mind boggled. Yeah. Like, which honestly, in it, I love being kind of the underdog. I love being yep. like, just you're crazy. There's something wrong with you type, you know, mentality from people around me. And this was a huge one of those, like you're what you're giving yeah. up a, a pretty good paying job in a good position to just, you know, what looks like to other people, you know, base jump into the unknown, but like we were talking about with people and teams, like, you know, with Matt partnering up here, it was always a little bit of that, that anxiety taken away because again, I knew who he was, what he had done yeah. and, and some of the structure that I'd be walking into. And, and I mean, lo and behold, it's been months now of us, you know, working together and it's, I feel like the best decision I've ever made because yeah. I'm a getting my feet wet in this NFT world, which it in itself, aside from music is a blessing just to be able to dig my feet in, to have an understanding, hopefully a long time before most people do, but then to be able to pursue my music, to be able to work on my craft every day, to be able to, you know, work at my own pace. I'm kind of my own boss. And, and that comes out in the creative side. You, I find working under someone else's thumb, you come home very resentful about that. And, and sometimes your craft or your hobby or your true purpose suffers because of it. So yeah. to be able to break out of those chains and kind of really, I feel like this is the first time I've ever felt what like real life is like, Yeah, it, it's been a vibe, man. And, and like you say to, with the, the hope of being able to keep growing and growing. And like you said, maybe join the elites. It's, it's nice to have no ceiling. Whereas in yeah. any job, yeah. there's always a ceiling. There's always a role that is the top you could ever get to, but with, you know, your own endeavors and, and obviously NFTs, especially there's really no ceiling. It's whatever you're willing to put in is what you'll get out. It's, yeah. it's, it's a great, well, and I think great that's time to be headed. alive, man. That's where we're headed though, with like web three and, and these types yeah. of things, like true compounding results are possible. We're like, think of the guy who, who uh, owns the factory that you worked at. Well, maybe he makes a million dollars a year because he's got some big operation, but think of the guy who runs it. How much does he make? Well, maybe 300. Mm -hmm. So like, okay, what do the guys under him make? Well, maybe a hundred. And what about everybody else? Well, yeah. they make 40 to 50 to 60. So, you know, you can only ever possibly get to 300, right? Yep. Which is running the whole show. Or maybe you, you end up buying out the guy who owns it. Well, that's a million. Well, yeah, maybe. But yeah. there's also yeah. everybody else competing for that exactly. job. Where this Web3 stuff is really fascinating because there's there are unlimited projects, which mean unlimited uh, opportunities to fail. But you know, there's this way where we can bet on people like you did by jumping your job to join up with Matt. It's like, mm -hmm. well, no, if we bet on great people and we, we spend the real time investing in people that we think are great, that's how we end up building really fantastic relationships, which allow us to make the right calls, which in some cases, like without Matt leaving the job, going full on business with no other partners and like having, you know, not as much finance maybe as your partner and stuff like that. That's very scary and actually mm -hmm. pretty risky. 
Yeah. Um, doing it with a partner, doing it with people that you believe in and that have skills or resources that you don't have, that's way less risky, even For if sure. it's an inherently risky act, right? Yeah. So that, that to me just comes down to commitment and, and the level of relationship that you want to build with these people. Like, and those can be one-way relationships too, right? Like I watched like 300 of Matt's videos before I really developed my relationship with him. So I yeah. already had a one-way relationship with him or Gary V. Uh, or I've spent, you know, tons of time with Grant Cardone. He just yep. doesn't know it yet. Right. And like, <laughs> and, and all these people, all these, you know, Jocko Willink, I'm not sure he won't, or Joe Rogan, I'm sure he won't either. But if these guys ever make an NFT, I'm after it. Right. Yeah. And it's just people I want to support people that I've spent a lot of time learning from a lot of time being a one way friend with. And it'd be really cool if we could be two-way friends. Right? Yeah, like, reciprocate yeah. that exactly. And and so. then to be able to, because most times it becomes a bit of an ongoing value membership to be yep. able to, to tap into that and to be able to kind of keep that relationship going and, and get a little bit more depth through maybe IRL meetups, yep. little perks, you know, just things that a lot of the big dogs like Gary or Tom are going to be baking in and have baked into their NFTs. I think that's a huge thing is like, imagine being part of a really tight-knit fan club that actually gets in real life benefits it's it's yeah. something that people have been like aching for for a long time you buy the full backstage experience at a concert but yeah. it only goes so far this yeah. takes it to like you're partying on a yacht with your favorite people yeah. it, it it's really crazy and and also like with the nft space as you said there's so much room to fail but there's so much room to be a first and that was something we yeah. were excited yeah. about and actually kind of I'll be honest, stumbled into the realization of, of we're the first custom made for you song NFT project that we can find. Like if somebody can present me with the, you know, blockchain info yeah. or Intel that someone was before us in terms of this model, but to, to come in and do something that seems like it's been done before a music NFT, there are those out there, but take it another yeah. you know, distillation level further of like, no, it's custom made for you. You get to yeah. create it yourself. And there's room to do that in lots of different markets and, niches, oh, yeah. you know, to take it one step further and get even more specific or more personal. And people really, I think vibe with that. And as much as there's room to fail and not hit the mark, there's a lot of room to, to hit the mark and, and even boil it down to a really select group. And as I said earlier, all you need is a hundred true fans, you know, with a, yeah. a small um, dollar figure, you can be a stay at home artist like myself yeah. or, you know, a hobbyist artist. That's not maybe living the, the grand life, but you can be your own boss every day. So it's really cool yeah. to, to see this NFT space open up so many lanes for people myself included. Well, the only limit to this is creativity, right? Like yeah. that, that, well, that's always been the case, but I mean, now it's, it's possible to do some of these big ventures without necessarily, like, if you want to be the guy at the factory making a million dollars, well, you actually had to build the fucking factory mm -hmm. and find all the people, train them all up on your systems and processes, buy the trucks, buy the raw materials, buy the machines that process it, you know, all of that stuff. So you got marketing, you got operations management, you got supply chain, you got logistics, yeah you've got sales, you've got uh, accounting, finance, you've all this junk that you could kind of skip all of that with an NFT. It depends on what yeah. your backend is and what other value you're providing. But I mean, for a lot of people, like in the case of yourself, really what it is, is just your time. And if you're passionate about putting your time into it, this is a way where you could turn almost nothing into something really cool uh, yeah. for the people that already want to support you. So it's like, it's really freaking cool. Like I'm actually, it's so goddamn cool how, how crazy this stuff can get. And like, for somebody like myself, like maybe you're like me and you, you kind of came from the factory family who, you know, you didn't really have a ton of money growing up. Like you had to skip out on sports and stuff and the house yep. was maybe leaking every time it rained and maybe your pipes froze whenever it got cold. And it fucking sucked. <laughs> uh, so when you come from that background and you make money, um, two things usually happen. And we talked about this yesterday too, with James on the podcast, like, mm. you know, there's really only a couple of people and there's these people that say like money can't buy happiness. And, uh, it's usually either people that are never going to have money, yeah. um, or people that ha have been born into money, right? It's, those are the only people that say that anybody that has had money and lost it, or people that have made money coming from nobody, yeah. they'll tell you right away, money will absolutely enable happiness because mm -hmm. You can spend more time with people that you like. You can do more activities with those people. You can travel. You can do all this shit. And, uh, you know, for somebody like me, so you, once you get the money, 
you're like uh, of two minds always you're always kind of ambivalent i should hold on to this money because i fucking hated being where i was yeah is one mindset right so a little bit of scarcity there and then there's also the abundance of like well i'm going to take all this money and i'm going to buy the tesla the truck the harley the snowmobile the atv all that shit right mm-hmm. it's just stuff that i know and i can use and i can get real utility out of it because i know what it was like not to have that stuff yeah yeah um so when something comes up that's a little bit on the scarier side of that, mm. a lot of people are going to default scarcity. So yeah. that was me by buying one board ape instead of buying three, by buying one Gary V friend instead of buying three uh, and all this stuff. And so I guess my message for anybody just getting into this, uh, probably nobody listening at this point, but anybody that wants to hear it, um, you don't need to start with a hundred thousand dollars in this yeah. market. Like you can do what I did, which is I, I spent like less than a thousand bucks and really the target audience of this podcast, if you don't have a thousand bucks laying around, fuck off, stop listening now or go <laughs> like, go improve your situation. <laughs> like get to yeah. the point where you get to the foul to, to play around. And what, what ends up happening is once you put in that, that whatever, a couple hundred bucks, a thousand bucks, you are going to start focusing on what's happening in that market. You're going to yeah. start checking into things. You're going to start thinking, oh, what does happen when, mm. uh, you know, the financial markets move? Does that affect crypto? Does that affect NFTs? Well, what if uh, Ethereum does this crazy nosedive, right? Everyone's like, oh, the fucking Ethereum, it went down. Crash, bro. crash. Yeah, that's crazy. It's crashing. Cool. Look at what the apes did at the same time the Ethereum crashed. They yeah. fucking hockey stick up because- right what people are valuing, people are actually giving you the value of the asset, right? Mm-hmm. And so the value, so, you know, when Ethereum just went to like, you know, it got like a 30% haircut. Yeah. The eight price went up 30 or more um, in terms of actual Ethereum. So yeah. when it was 80, 80 Ethereum, well, now it's 114. And it you're kinda, like, oh shit. It like balances itself out. It seems like but, the NFT to crypto. But if you're not in the market, what are you seeing? You're seeing a yeah. headline. Oh my God, Ethereum took a huge haircut. Yeah, but what does that mean, mm. right? Like, what does that mean to you and the projects that you're looking at? Like, and do your research. But to me, I've always found the way for me to get involved in something is I need to invest in it and like really uh, have something at stake here. And so like for yeah. me, a thousand bucks, I'm like, if this thousand goes to zero, I will never miss it. It's fine. Um, but I also am the guy that came from having basically no money to Mm -hmm. working my ass off to getting money, which means I'm going to stare at that thousand bucks and I'm going to pay attention to it. And Oh my God, that thousand dollars is 400,000 now. Damn dude. I'm I'm, now I'm full in. Now I'm like even going to go and potentially learn discord, which I fucking hate. It's a dumpster (laughs) fire of an app. But that's where the people are. It's messy. And, but you're right. Like you can tell people about these board apes, even for yourself, you hold one. Yeah. And say, I, you know, they're valued at this much, but until you like hold it, do it all yourself and get some of that skin in the game, it's hard. Like you say, to get out of that scarcity mindset to, to have any belief, like I was saying earlier, cause there's a lot of that in the beginning conviction and belief of just yeah. like, this is a thing. It's definitely going somewhere. I'm hodling and to buy into something and, and have, whether it's a terrible experience or a good experience to get some of that fail forward skin in the game, I think is crucial. And with, I, I'm completely on the same page as you, man. Like I needed to take not some L's, but in terms of the FUD where I'm like, I should have bought three of those, wake up the next yeah. day, the floor is quadrupled. And you're like, yeah. um, I think everyone needs to experience a few of those to basically renew and reconnect with, am I convicted in it? And if I am hit by, don't, yeah. you know, nickel and dime myself and don't have that scarcity mindset. But it is so difficult when you've, come from, you know, I wouldn't say the bottom with myself, but very close to, or, you know, sometimes feeling like that to when you get something that's got some value to it to not just either paper hand out or to not buy it in the, in the first place. And I think again, just tips for anyone that's listening, if they are just get some skin in the game, get your ETH wallet going, start playing around, buy some low cost stuff that you feel convicted in, you feel has some legs and could go somewhere in the future and just start kind of trying things because the sooner you get comfortable the sooner you'll hit one of those blue chips or one of it doesn't even need to necessarily double in value from a financial standpoint it could be an emotional value it doubles in value because of the utility you get because of the community because of the embrace you feel from these people it it, there's just so much to to gain really yeah no and and that's the way and like one of the other things is yeah what, what you just said there was a term that people if they're not 
all tweeted out, they're tweaking on Twitter, is paper <laughs> hand, right? And paper hand is, is anybody who's going to essentially just fold, right? When they, yeah. either when they see the market come up, right? Or they see the market going down and they sell. Yeah. Um, so there's two types of people, right? And and uh, you would call me a diamond hand because I've, I've actually never sold an NFT. Um, I've never sold. Wow. And uh, yeah, I, I don't That's sell. a boast. That's like a, like a WWE belt right there, man. <sighs> I don't sell. Uh, so, you know, I, I have the first one I minted and the first one I minted was this goddamn hideous, uh, piece of artwork. I think it's called the crypto mini. And it's like mm. these stupid things that were free. It literally was free. So all you had to do is pay the gas and the gas was way cheaper at the time. So like, you know, I think it was 20 bucks for gas and gas is like sort of the transit transaction fee, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I spent 20 bucks I minted this stupid thing for free and I was like, wow, this is crazy. And then I watched it do literally nothing because obviously yeah. it was like a nothing thing. And most of these things are nothing burgers, right? Um, and uh, and then the next thing was, this was back when Clubhouse was a thing. And I also hated that dumpster fire mm. of an app. But I was on a Clubhouse every day and just, I would be mucking around the house or whatever. And I'm listening to these guys chat about crypto and stuff. And this is like, to me, the early days. So like, yeah, yeah. you know, and uh, these guys, there was always this one guy and his name is... Uh, Sabet. So oh, Sab yeah, yeah, yeah. So Sabet was on there every day, giving value, explaining NFTs, whatever. And then he, there was an offering. He he had released five more uh, Sabet mm. artwork things. I, I don't even know what they're called. I think they're just called Sabet. And oh, Pixel Pop was another one that he had. Mm. And uh, and uh, oh, Ugly Kitties is the one thing. And okay, so yeah, I've seen those. I bought one of these freaking ugly kitties, and I think I bought it for like a hundred or 150 bucks or something, or maybe it was 300. I just randomly looked at it the other day because I keep those ones in a different wallet, like they're outside of my hard wallet. And uh, and those things have gone up like quite a bit, but I've never even imagined. Like, I just bought it because this guy was giving me so much value. I was like, God damn, he's teaching That's me so cool every day for nothing. And I, what's, what's a couple hundred bucks. So I minted that thing. I just looked at it the other day. Cause I never signed into that wallet and, uh, and it's gone up like quite a bit. And I'm like, Oh wow. geez, like double your investment or whatever. So it went from like, whatever, a hundred to 200 or 300 to 600. doesn't matter. Yeah. But like, still I'm like, damn dude, that's cool. But that guy was out there hustling. And I'm like, you got to just respect the grind on that. Yeah. It's, a, it's an awareness game. And like, that's kind of not a battle we're facing, but that's where we're kind of sitting in right now, LB 52 and space monkey fight club is just like every business, you know, marketing oh, yeah. awareness is always a little bit of an uphill battle, uh, getting people to understand your product and your value add, and really obviously niching down your avatar and saving yep. yourself the time of even wasting breath on people that can't benefit from your product or can't afford your product. So yep. it's really been, um, I've been trying to do the same thing as Sabet, just be in these, these rooms yep. and being um, the space as much as possible and, and always looking to provide value. You know, obviously there's a little bit of salesmanship, a little yep. bit of shilling, if you will, which is just kind of, you you have know, to. It, it, it's necessary. It's, it's just all about, I think, and I, I'm sure you'd agree from the real estate game is just how yeah. you go about it. It's you, yeah. you need to do it, but how you do it is the key. And there's yeah. people that are very aggressive and forceful. And then there, there's ways to uh, get a little more soothing with the offer and, and yep. kind of slide in a little less obvious. And yeah, it's just, it, it's fun to be in this awareness stage because through that, I actually get to pick up a lot of value in these rooms and I'm learning and, er and potentially earning all the way through. And it's, it's uh, like, I know we keep saying it, but it's so awesome. And if you're not like paying attention in any way to NFTs, man, like you're missing out on not only some probably some cash, but a lot of fun, man. And like a lot of yeah. learning and learning can be fun if you're actually passionate about it. If it's something that, you know, tickles your fancy and gets you out of bed. I, I think this is one of those things for a lot of people. They just haven't discovered it yet. Yeah. Where it's just not like, it's not simplified yet, but again, right. like we're at this point where it, it's blue ocean. Like it, if you can go through the struggle a bit, figure out how to get cryptocurrencies and then what nfts that you're interested in like there's so much blue ocean it's kind of crazy for sure yeah I, i'm hoping what i'm hoping we see is more artists more people embrace the independence more people embrace the community element of this and uh and that over time these these currencies and these nfts and even the platforms that sell the nfts become much more user-friendly mm, yeah. and much more clear about like you know, what, what, what do I need to do? And if I do that, what will I get? Right. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that 
once these things kind of figure themselves out, which they will, because this is this is the thing about perfect competition, which is where we're at here. This is what this market is. It's perfect competition. Anybody can start one, right? Yeah. Which means you're going to have a bunch of people. But guess what? The only the the bold and the brave and the committed are going to actually survive in perfect competition. For sure. And the way they do that is by offering something of value to somebody that needs that value who's willing to pay for it. That's how perfect competition works. Anybody that rips anybody off, anybody that uh, a good term in crypto is rug pull, like. Yep. These things, when they happen, like you, you only get to do that once and maybe you get caught up in one of those, but you're, you're going to learn from that too. Yeah. And then you're, then you're going to start thinking, wow, I'm going to start trusting the people that I know and trusting the people that I've seen win before. And the more and more, the further down the path that we go on that, um, obviously the, the more red the ocean will become, but also the more simplified it will be and the more money will enter the market. So really yeah. unique time, really unique time for NFTs, unique time Agreed. for um, small artists. Like, I, I think you're the perfect example of like somebody who was trying to do this as an artist and then found an additional way to like add leverage to that, like yeah. add, a, add a bit of uh, visibility to that, add a bit of, because like every business is a lead generation problem. That's all it is. And if you can have this, this tool to use that increases your visibility in the marketplace, like it's just so, it's so exciting. Like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm fired up about it. And I don't think people Same, man. are talking about this stuff. Like, I think we're actually having a relatively unique conversation right now uh, compared to what most people are going to be talking about when it's NFTs. Like, oh, they're- I think you're right. And, down. <laughs> and, like, and these are tools. There's likely some value, you know, to being a fly on the wall for convos like these and, and ones that are in, you know, events and things happening around maybe the world or even the internet and just plugging into them is half the battle and like being willing, you know, that's the thing yep. we're both willing to have conversations and hold and collect NFTs. And that's half of it. But it's, I think you're so right about like the user friendliness and it's very intimidating right now. There's a lot of like resistance points. And once some marketplace or again, maybe even just education gets a lot better at smoothing those things out and maybe being able to buy NFTs with your credit card or, like yeah. with fiat, that's going to take things to a whole nother level. Yeah. And, and obviously as things continue to grow and people start to see the types of value people are not only monetary, but like with V friends, the type of physical things and the yeah. type of experiences and that no one else can have, there's going to be major FOMO of course, yeah. which is that fear of missing out. I want to have that. I've been a fan this is so cool. I waited too long and people are just going to flock to this. And like yeah. you say, blue ocean could turn very red. So why not, you know, float or sail or even speed boat if you can on that yeah. blue ocean before yeah. everybody gets here. Yeah, no. And that's been my strategy. I've been experimenting with it. And I think I'm going to actually be um, turning a lot more of the proceeds of my like rock solid. So like I use my real estate business as an engine, right. To collect for sure money. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is really start transitioning a lot of the proceeds from those businesses into these more risky opportunities mm. that have opportunity to compound. Because like one thing I've learned is you buy real estate, you invest in these hard assets and uh, it's fucking work, man. Like it is actual serious work. Like it takes a lot of time. You have to raise a lot of capital. You have to establish great partnerships with great yeah. employees, all these things. And uh, really all along the way, you lose control. Right. So, and I'm not saying that you have control of NFTs. That would be a crazy statement, but um, you, you lose a lot of control and the stakes are very high with big numbers. If you want to make any real money in real estate in specific to real estate, I'm sure there's yeah. other businesses where maybe the opportunity cost is a bit lower, but you're staking a lot. And even though you can make a lot at a time, like maybe we make, you know, 30, 40, 50 K on every deal. That's amazing but you had to risk a lot to get there yeah. and it was a lot of energy to get there and you can't really do it that quickly. Like there's just not that many ways to do it extremely fast. And, uh, you know, after that you get taxed, right? You get taxed, yeah. Yeah. like I said, a lot, you get capital gains, you get income tax, your business gets taxed. Uh, there's tax all along the way as you're buying the raw materials and paying for the labor. Like it's just unbelievable how much yeah. taxes and shit is involved. And, uh, when I look at NFTs, like, there's nothing else where you have the opportunity to purchase at, you know, 800 bucks or something and, and run to 400. Like you just can't do that. Yeah. And it would, it takes me pretty much an entire year to make 400,000 in real estate. Right. And so 
you can do a bunch of eight hundred dollar bets <laughs> if you yeah. have if you have some resources and, and if spread that out. One of those goes up, you're good to go. So that's where I think NFTs are cool from somebody in my position who has some disposable mm. uh, income or investable income that you're ready to, to have more risk in your portfolio. I think this is such a cool opportunity financially, yeah. but also for all the other things that we talked about. So for sure. Um, yeah, man, I'm fucking excited. Are you, uh, I'll ask you the same thing I asked Dan, have you ever thought, or um, sorry, same thing I asked James yesterday, like is is Canada where you plan on being or like, cause there's been a lot of these like crypto communities developing like yeah. Malta, Portugal, El Salvador. Um, all of these places have extremely favorable taxation on yes. NFTs and Bitcoin and well, crypto in general, right? Cause your NFT is kind of worth, like it's only worth it. It's only worth something when you sell it. So you yeah. need to sell it yeah. for, for you to actually receive a currency. Um, but you know, places like Portugal, um, or El Salvador have extremely favorable taxation on these products. So have you put any thought into this? Have you, if I'm being that, honest, that I, haven't, down the path yet? I haven't thought that far, although like I did see when, and I think that maybe it wasn't fresh news, but that more pertinent news because people were so invested in crypto that Portugal and other places were, were almost selling, you know, like publicizing exactly like if you guys got crypto gains if you you have that type of business come here we're definitely looking to boost our economy through that and yeah. again like it's almost smart for them cuz you're still making tax money but you're bringing in some of the biggest bags some of the biggest earners and being able to tap into that and also boast that they're a part of your economy yeah. but if if i'm thinking out loud on the subject i i feel like you know if things go the way that i really hope they they do and i'm pretty confident they will just based off of you know the team we have and and the way things are gearing up here i feel like it'll it, it's a conversation that'll need to be had because yeah it might make very perfect sense and i'm all up for traveling man i'm a young guy single yeah. I'm looking yeah. to kind of see the world if I can. And if I, there's a large monetary benefit from living somewhere that, you know, is new, fresh, cool. I feel like, you know, that becomes a no brainer. And as well as like, we'll see what happens here at home in Canada, but there's just a lot of clamping down lately. And, yeah. and you know, so much red tape to start a business. It's, it's, it's crazy because I've started businesses of a lot smaller scale before yeah. and now taking it to the full legitimate, yeah. you know, going through all that red tape is not fun. And I'm not saying other countries don't have some of that red yeah. tape, but to at least get a little bit more of your cookie at the That's other the end thing. of it, if you're going to put the work in, yeah, it feels better cool. to at least, you know, get more than half of it, you know, cause that's, yeah, that's that 50% right. number hits and like, it doesn't feel very good. And even like, I'm a collector. I have some NFTs that are luckily in the last little bit, pretty decently valuable. And, you know, that's not something I'm that familiar with is, is paying gains on and looking that number up and seeing, you know, yeah. this is what it's worth. This is, yeah, you oh. lose a quarter right away pretty much for capital gains. You, you just instantly deflate. So I feel like, yep. you know, your question about, especially like Portugal or something, I could see that being a, a large option and maybe not, a full, you know, I live there full time, but at least having a, some sort of a structure yeah. set up there and a, yeah. a, a home base. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's the thing, like, I don't know. I just, I keep thinking about this more and the further down the path I go, the more I want to get out of it. Like, yeah, it's just, it makes no sense to me. And uh, I don't want to get too tangential, but like when you live in a goddamn country that takes you know, half your money and then the roads are shit and healthcare is kind of shit. And then yeah, there's rules, life. regulations and mandates that don't allow you to speak the way you want to speak or to live out your medical choices the way you want to. Yeah. Like now you've crossed into a territory that's really sketch. And so I'm looking at some of these countries and uh, if anybody is listening to this and you're interested in this as well, reach out to me because I'm looking into these and like, you know, El Salvador is fully embracing Bitcoin as, yeah, as yeah. currency. Like, I mean, uh, allegedly there are many expats that can live months and months and months without ever having to touch dollars, right? They're transacting in sats, they're transacting in Bitcoins. Uh, the president's telling the IMF to go get fucked uh, over Twitter, which is hilarious. And uh, he's doing so because he's just saying, no, they've got a new president. They're, they're really cleaning up the safety of the country uh, from what I hear. And uh, they're increasing security and trying to get Bitcoin people in there because why mm. wouldn't you? If you're, if you're using, you know, you're living in some of these parts of the world where currencies get massively inflated uh canada's on that goddamn list now thank yep. you 
uh, where your currency is getting inflated. So you're losing uh, a large portion of your cash anyways, before you even get taxed, the, the money's worth less. Yeah. Um, that's already happening. So now you're in one of these countries where, you know, you've got this rampant inflation. You don't know what to do about it. The government was corrupt, but now you're a new regime and you're thinking, fuck this. We don't need this. Let's go straight to Bitcoin. It's relatively stable. It, it loses big swings at a time. But if you're just transacting in it, like I think once these things stable out, like a lot of people, if you haven't read it yet, go read the Bitcoin standard. It'll talk to you quite a bit about Keynesian economics and how most of the world runs their economic systems. Not good. It's really bad. Like monetary yeah. policy in general is just garbage. When you, when you start mucking around with money supply to solve problems, yeah, you're inviting bullshit into the system. And that's where I think crypto as the underlying technology and, and blockchain and, um, and, and these things for NFTs is also another reason why I'm so interested in it is because I have no faith. Like I have just zero faith in these people. Like yeah. if, uh, if Trudeau could have it his way, he would just run the fucking money press as long as he was in power, collect all the dinero and then book it. Right. And, uh, and that's rug, their plan. rug pull rugging the whole kind. And that's crazy. Dude. That is crazy. International rug. Uh, and, um, you know, that shit scares me. And that's where I like some of these countries that are like, you know what, we're going to clean up our act. We're going to introduce some of these currencies and we're going to bring stability here. Let's get some people with money here so that yeah. we can, because what's happening is that they're like, we don't need your tax dollars. You just come here and spend, right? Which is what you're going to do anyways. Yeah. And, uh, and that's badass because that gives jobs to all the locals and all the different things and new businesses will arise out of that and new qualities of life for everybody there. Like I'm into that. I would yeah. way rather spend my money there than spend it here on shit that's already overtaxed, uh, like HSD income tax, capital gains, a paying everything, yeah. land it, transfer it tax, stacks up. tax. It, it adds just, up. It adds up crazy. And like you say, to almost be on the, the buildup, you know, you're on the, yeah. something's growing and here it feels like, I'm not saying this for fact, but it feels like there's a little bit of deterioration. Like we're slipping this way and to be on the forefront oh, yeah. of a new country that's growing and adopting new technology and things like that i feel like it would just feel better you'd be a little bit more energized a little bit more lit up about it and like i just loved what you said about you know we pay all this tax money but then you look out your door and things that you personally Sucks. care about aren't being looked at at all and you know it's it's crazy to think that some of these nft projects their leadership is is and i'm not gonna say because it's apples and oranges you know running a country is not running an nft project but that from like a financial standpoint, just that perspective alone have been able to do massive, massive, like 10 X gains, create these thick cultures, these thick yeah. kind of communities that don't bend or budge for anything. Like you say, are diamond handing board apes that are worth well over a quarter million dollars. Yeah. And these are like regular Joe Schmoes that are sometimes anon. And maybe I would trust some of these guys more than you know politicians or people that are running countries because they know they definitely know how to manage money and create something that people are excited about and that's you know a big yeah. part of anything so it's just it's just crazy to observe again some of these nft projects are a like sh just sunning really absolutely putting down some big corporations that already exist in terms of like market cap and things like that i yeah. forget the exact one but doodles and some of the big blue chip projects are actually starting to surpass like Victoria's Secret and things yeah. like that in terms of like overall value. And that's just nuts to see. We're going to see more of it, I think, too. Oh, I love it, dude. All right, man. Well, I got to run, but this has been an awesome chat. And uh, I, yeah, I think we should do it. I think we should continue investing in ourselves, continue to invest in uh, independence. For sure. And, uh, and the ability for people to come up with just adding value first um and yeah i think it'd be really cool if we just made you know a lot of money and we go to some community that could use that money and do something better with it Absolutely. and uh, tell trudeau to go fuck himself and that's hey. the message of every podcast i'm doing from now on so i like i like it so we're taking a little bit of a different turn especially even integrating now nfts into the conversation I right think I, I like the new direction I mean, i'm sure there'll still be some value for the real estate professionals and all that but <laughs> yeah. i can't get it i can't get 
too angry about this new direction. I like no, it. I know. I know. I won't make you say it, but I'm saying I'm fucking shouting it from the rooftops. <laughs> I'm just about a, there, man. I think guys a dick. I'm leaving. Yeah. I, I've, <laughs> I've been so tunnel vision in NFT land yeah. that it's, it's been not something I've been paying as much attention as it yeah. needs, but yeah. I think you're doing right by, you know, screaming this from the rooftops, my man. Hey man, you can't forget. We come from the factory. What's going on That's with those it. people right now? They're getting That's wiped it. out. The middle class getting wiped and, the, and right, it man. always happens. The middle and the bottom get wiped. Uh, I'm fortunate enough not to be there, but I'm telling you, they're getting wiped and it's and, through inflation and it's through everything. It's like supply chain disruptions everywhere. Well, guess what that does to the automotive industry and manufacturing yeah. and everything else. These guys are wiener heads. Uh, it's time to embrace more independent strategies. And this is one of the ways. So hell yeah. Man, you're a freaking beauty. Thanks for coming on today and sharing your Absolutely. story. Absolutely. Absolutely. NFT NFTs. If you All guys right. want to like hear more or see anything more about NFTs or myself, just hit up project LB52.com at Dan, the lost boy on all socials and at project LB52 on all socials. So if you need a custom song for your, you know, your business or your brand or just yourself, we're the guys to talk to. Boom. And I'm going to play us out with my custom song right now. So. Let's go. And Boom. thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Cheers guys. See you later. Cheers. See you, Danny. See ya. Yeah. 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 Yo, I heard you was looking for some off market steals. I know a guy. I'm on the wholesale gold trail. They trying to ride my coattails. No bails, no fails. Private loans and gross scales. I beg your pardon, run the market just like Adam Martin. I beg your pardon, run the market just like Adam Martin. The wholesale gold trail. They trying to ride my coattails. No bails, no fails. Private loans and gross scales. I beg your pardon, run the market just like Adam Martin. I beg your pardon, run the market just like. Selling me short Pull up with a rolly on In that new Tesla Sport All you hear is deals, deals When we banging on your doors Wanna put some new wheels On the black Aventador We got off market steals We can be your biggest source I've been eating bigger meals Since I used a bigger fork I've been balling on your heels And I didn't touch the court I've been had you in your feels But I do not have remorse Don't talk that walk that I need it Just like that.